Hey guys, on the ground in Hazrat Shah Jalal International Airport, that's Dhaka, 0.787 just going past us there. Bangladesh Airlines, as you can see. Uh, yeah, so what I want to talk about, there's been a lot going on regarding turbulence. Everybody's talked about it. All the pilots I know have talked about it. They've all pushed out stuff on turbulence, what turbulence is, and um, what actually happens to the aeroplane in turbulence, how can it be avoided, and so on. So what I'm going to talk about is, is there's two types of turbulence, of course. There's clear air turbulence, which we cannot see, and there's no technology on the aeroplane that can see clear air turbulence. The technology that's on the aeroplane, when pilots talk about the weather radar, is technology that can detect water droplets in the atmosphere as a radar return to the aircraft using a radar that's in the nose of the aircraft as they would use a radar to detect aircraft in flight, enemy aircraft, they detect it and they fire missiles at it. Except we're using the same technology, more or less, to get a beam sent out into a cloud and then it returns to the aeroplane and gives us a picture on the screen here, on this one, which is the navigation display. This is where we would have the weather indicated on the navigation display. So this is the weather radar panel, this one here. Okay, and that is on the 747-400 ERF. The uh, weather radar panel on the uh, Boeing 747-8 is slightly different, but essentially they're doing a similar sort of job. So I've just selected it to a test pattern here. I'll put it on there and let's see what we get with a test and let's have a look at the colors that we'll see that will come up from there. There you go. So these are the Monitor colors. radar display. Give go around. Wind shear ahead. Wind shear ahead. Wind shear ahead. Okay, so that's the weather test panel, uh, the test pattern. Weather radar test pattern. So it's got green, it's got amber, it's got red, and it's also got magenta. This magenta is the one we worry about the most because that's an indication of turbulence. Pretty severe normally if it comes up like that, it's pretty severe turbulence. The reds can be turbulent as well and we avoid them. And if possible, we avoid the ambers too uh, when a, a picture is painted on there. Black just means there's no return, there's nothing. So it's clear air, it's nice. Green is generally okay. There may still be precipitation that is generally okay. So that's the weather radar test panel. The other thing I want to tell you about is that, so clear air turbulence. So what tools do the pilots have to avoid weather? One, we've got the weather radar, as I've just shown you. Two, we've got forecasts and weather reports. We also have reports from other aircraft as far as turbulence goes. Other aircraft, air-to-air -air communications. They might, an aircraft ahead of you, you're going in the same direction or opposite direction an aircraft might report to air traffic control that they're experiencing moderate or severe turbulence in a particular uh, area or a particular region they'll pass that air traffic control will then pass it on to other following aircraft to say we have a report from british airways or virgin or that at flight level so and so they experience moderate to severe turbulence between position so and so and position so and so so that information is passed to us because we cannot see clear air turbulence so i'll show you in here so apart from the weather radar so we've got this is the flight we're doing today so i'll just show you what tools we have so this is the efb i'll just go in here and that's what we get so this is a uh, issued by London Meteorological Office and a fixed time. And this is a significant weather chart, which is telling us between flight level 250 and 630. This is the weather. This is basically cloud, thunderstorm, and so on. That's where we are, Dhaka. We'll be going to Hanoi in a, in a minute. So in this, it's saying, in this region here, which we're going to traverse, there will be some isolated embedded cumulonimbus Charlie Bravo clouds from essentially below 10,000 feet all the way up to 49,000 feet. So we can expect in this region to have that. Now on the bottom of this chart here, 
we have CAT areas, where it says CAT areas. CAT just means clear air turbulence. And that cannot be seen by the weather radar which we have on board. So it's undetectable by the weather radar because there are no water droplets to return. So it's clear air. So how does that uh, weather form? It forms because generally strong winds or the wind at higher levels is traversing high ground. For example, here's the African continent. The wind is coming at 38,000 feet. The core wind is more than 100 miles an hour, 140 miles an hour at 38,000 feet. Uh, so at 38,000 feet. So over here, you can see the wind turns and starts going southbound. So if an airplane's flying there, you can expect that with the wind change, an airplane's flying there, you can expect that with a wind change, the airplane could experience turbulence. So those areas there, you see the numbers here, one, two, three, and the little symbol there indicates turbulence. So that's light turbulence, that's occasional moderate turbulence with the two on there, and you might have three as well. So let me see. So they've got, they've got a one, two, three, four, and five. So what we do while you're checking in as passengers on a passenger aircraft, for example, you're checking in, we're looking at all this and preparing the flight, and we're looking at these numbers. If we're flying from, say, Johannesburg to Hong Kong, we'd be pl flying through this area here, going past Mauritius, coming towards Hong Kong, which is over there. So I would look here and say three. What does three indicate? Three indicates clear air turbulence, light between 26,000 feet and 45,000 feet. So we can expect some light turbulence. As we fly along, we get to the region which has a three on it, and that's affected by isolated embedded thunderstorms in this area and also uh, clear air turbulence because of the wind direction change. So these are the charts we look at and they give us an idea of where we expect turbulence. So if we took off from Johannesburg for example and we're heading that way, I might as the captain fly that way with the fastened seatbelt sign on until we're clear of this area and then on the other side we we'll put the seatbelt off and as we approach this region here we might put the fasten seatbelt sign on we will be talking to other aircraft that might be in the area have you gone past here did you experience any turbulence we'll talk to air traffic control all that kind of stuff because clear air turbulence is not detectable so we have to talk to other aircraft i'll show you what it looks like in some clips that i'm attaching to this video of what strategies we use in flight to try and avoid or go around whether that we can see or that the weather radar can see and we look out. Our eyes are very important too. We look out in flight, see any clouds, go around it. Basically just going around it using our eyes, daylight. Nighttime, of course, difficult to do that, but the lightning is a good indicator of where you're possibly going to experience thunderstorms and that sort of heavy weather. So we use the wind charts, the uh, significant weather charts. This is issued by London. Another one is issued by Hong Kong as well for high altitude. And we use those charts and we just go basically with experience, like talking to other aircraft, talking to air traffic control, and we sort out where we should go and when the fast and seat bill sign should come on. Like I've said before, always keep it on, even when you're sitting down and the seat bill sign is off. Just keep it on because we cannot see clear air turbulence. Um, I'm sure you've been in a vehicle where you're traveling on a vehicle and you go through a dip and there's been no indication on the road, no road signs that the road dips quite a bit. And it gives the people on board a bit of a start as the driver is going through. And uh, everybody says, oh, they really should warn people about that dip. That's clear air turbulence. You cannot see it. If there's a sign on the side saying there's a hump ahead or a dip ahead, well, that essentially would be like a weather radar telling you ahead is a hump. So if you can't see it and you hit it before you see it, that's clear air turbulence. But if you put a seat belt on in the car as well and you go through a dip, you won't hit the ceiling of the of the vehicle you're sitting in. So that's what you've got to do. But have a look at some of the clips attached to this video and hope it makes sense. So that's what we do later. This is some of the stuff that goes on when the pilots are trying to deviate around weather. So there's weather ahead. At the moment, we're five miles to the right of our current track. We're laterally offset by five miles. 
that's indicated by the R5 where my finger is pointing. So we're looking to see what kind of deviation we'd like to ask ATC for. So we're going to try 10 miles to the right and see what that looks like. Are we going to miss the weather? If that doesn't work, we're going to try 20 miles to the right because there's also weather, not immediately in front, but there's also weather behind the weather that's in front of us. So we want to avoid that as well. So 20 miles looks all right. We've, we've uh, tried it out on the FMS and that's what we're going to ask ATC. The call would be CAFE 049 request 20 miles right of track to avoid weather. Hi.